World One. By the way, we are now Turkish government. I mean, Turkey is 800,000 square kilometers nearly. But in the World War One period, Ottoman Empire was covering three times larger than present Turkey area nearly. Two and a half million square kilometers. So a very big area. So uh, the eight more front lines on the other parts of the World War One. So when the Gallipoli campaign was over here, Turkish side, Allied side, were in rush. They sent all the units to the other parts of the World War One. So it was impossible to build the bodies and it was impossible to take the supplies away and it was impossible to take the ammunition away. So they left all of the things on the ground. So nearly uh, for three years between 1916 and 1919, nobody came here. Oh. So uh, that's the reason why we have really well preserved battlefields. So because of the natural effects, because of the erosion, all the things were totally covered with earth. So that's the reason why we have lots of cemeteries, lots of graves, any part of the world today, any part of the battlefields today. So the, the, thanks to the thanks to the three years missing period, <coughs> we have a well preserved battleground today. So between 1916 and 1919, nobody came here. So we haven't entered the battlefields yet. We are getting closer to the battlefields. In a short time, uh, we are going to come across some cemeteries, some memorials. Uh, so that's going to, they are going to be the markers of the battlefields, as you know. But first of all, as you know, uh, we should keep some parts of the battlefields in order to uh, catch the booking, uh, because uh, we are now heading to the highest point on your right hand side, up on the hill on the far right. And while driving there, we are going to see lots of cemeteries, lots of memorials. From now on, uh, the cemeteries that we are going to see are going to be mainly Anzac, Australian and New Zealand cemeteries mainly. And uh, also there are there will be some different cemeteries, different national things because over 24 different nations fought at Gallipoli and uh, most of them were the uh, colonies of France and uh, United Kingdom as you know like India for example, India suffered 1350 uh, killed in action and Bangladesh of course and uh, some uh, Ceylon tea planters for example from India again, from that part of the world so uh, lots of different nationalities so one flagpole just we passed the flagpole was uh, the marker of the Turkish burial site and as we started to come across these kinds of markers it means we are getting closer to the battlefields from now on so this is <coughs> this is the same vegetation 100 years ago nearly 108 years ago but during the uh, in the 1915 during the war time the war lasted for nearly 100 and uh, 259 days nearly eight and a half months and in eight and a half months over 500,000 people died or wounded this was the result of the war shortly uh, at 11 we should be right here at the museum on your right hand side so that's going to take us to the battlefields while, while passing uh, through the cemeteries and the memorials we are going to be on the highest point on the high ground Chanak Bear 252 meters out 282 meters altitude all the attempts of the allies were to capture that ridge you can understand why so the battlefields were looking like a barren land, like a desert, because of the explosions, because of the shell fire. So uh, in 1950s, the battlefields were replanted again. But uh, three big bushfires here in 1968, in 1973, in 1994, there were three big bushfires. And because of the bushfires, there were lots of explosions here because of the unexploded shells. And over uh, 30 local people died because of these kinds of unexploded shells. Uh, because of the war period so this is now going to show us uh, the location of the battlefield from now on if you keep looking straight ahead in front of our car we from now on we are going to see lots of Turkish flags so as I told you before the Turkish flags are the markers of the Turkish burial sites from your from now on your left hand side allied positions sol tarafımız bundan sonra Anzak mevzileri our right hand side is going to be the Turkish side Türk, uh, Türk tarafı bundan sonra sağ tarafımız 
ortada yürüdüğümüz yolda iki mevziyi birbirinden ayıran sınır olarak düşünelim bundan sonrası. I mean the road in the middle is going to be the part of the uh, no man's land. Left hand side Allied, right hand side Turkish. And it's going to give us an idea about the uh, size of the battlefields. I show you the most dangerous part. The distance between the Turkish and the Allied trenches was only 8 meters or 9 meters. So uh, from there on, lots of Turkish flags. If you were here, for example, let's say three months ago, there will have been 29 Turkish mass graves here, but today we have 41. If you were here eight months ago, there will have been no memorial like the one on your left hand side, except for a barren land, except for a Turkish flag. It was built just eight or nine months ago. There will have been no memorial like the one on your right hand side. It's quite new, nine months old, 10 months old only. Bu sağımızda solumuzda yanından geçtiklerimiz 9-10 ay öncesi inşa edildi ee, ve bunların hepsi gerçek e, defil noktalarını işaret ediyor bize. Uh, they are all the actual burial sites. All we need is to clear the vegetation. If we clear the vegetation on our left hand side, right hand side, we can easily see the remains of the trenches. So, uh, but as you know, when you clear the trenches, it is more accessible and more so it's impossible to preserve the battlefields. And if you keep looking straight ahead in, your, in front of our car, there is a statue of a Turkish soldier carrying a British officer. It's called Respect to the Mehmet Memorial. They were Mehmet is the common name of the Turkish soldiers like Johnny's, like Tommy's. Try to imagine the distance between the Turkish and the Allied trenches was only eight meters and a Turkish soldier saw a British officer while he was laying on the ground and he waved a white flag in order to cease fire for a short time and then he came out of his trench and he picked the British officer up took the British officer to Australian trench and came back to his trench and started to fight again. So this was witnessed by an Australian officer called Richard Casey, Lord Casey, and he was the Governor General of Australia in 1950s. So this is the last, this is the symbol of the last gentleman's war of the world. I mean, they were trying to kill each other. They were trying to help each other. It was 100% different war. Uh, because this is uh, the last gentleman's war of the world. This was uh, this was the reason why we uh, have why the war had a different names. Because uh, they started to respect each other uh, in 259 days. But as you know, in 259 days there was only one truce, ceasefire. Only for nine hours. Sadece bir tane dokuz saatlik ateş kes yapıldı. Onun da yapılmasının tek bir sebebi vardır. Kamplısın ve çevresindeki bizim yapmış olduğumuz bir taarruzumuz vardır. 18 Mayıs, 19 Mayıs'a bağlayan gece bir gün içerisindeki kaybımızın sayısı 3000 şehit, 7000 yaralı. O da yaklaşık olarak şöyle bir 300 metre kadar daha ucuzun ön tarafında olacaktır. So uh, that was the I was talking about the Turkish attack on the 19th of May because over 42,000 Turkish soldiers were on our right hand side and nearly 17,000 Turkish soldiers were on our left hand side. Uh, Allied soldiers were on the left hand side. Over 60,000 men were ready to fight just in one day on the 19th of May. So uh, Turkish attack started early in the morning uh, at around half past 3 a.m. and after 9 hours charging Turkish army suffered 10,000 casualties, 3,000 killed in action, nine, uh, nearly 7,000 heavily wounded and allies suffered only 600. I keep going but first of all in front of our car we have a memorial, it's the Australian memorial, Lone Pine Memorial. If you watch the Russell Crowe movie you are going to hear the name of uh, Lone Pine attack on the 6th, 7th, 8th and the 9th of August. In the Lone Pine Memorial we have 1167 graves and over 5000 names identified but their bodies were never found. 5000 yakın isim var anıtı çevre duvarlar üzerinde. İsimlerine ulaşılabilmiş ama mezardan hiçbir zaman ulaşılamamış. Nerede oldukları belli değil. Sadece 167 tane de mezar var içerisinde. So we are now getting closer to see the original remains of the trenches from the war time. Abi şurada biraz yavaşlayalım duralım. <gülüyor> Karım atıyor ya. So the, according to the official maps, we are now in the Allied trenches. The Turkish trenches are 40 meters on your right hand side. And as you know, after the landing operation, it was a stalemate anymore. If you just keep looking on your right hand side, in the bottom, you can see the uh, remains of a tunnel. A tunnel. And the trenches on your left hand side allies. And the Turkish soldiers were nearly 40 meters on our right hand side. So according to the maps, 40 meters, quite short distance. 
But as you know, they wanted to find a different way of fighting. They started to dig tunnels. And according to the story, on the 29th of May, 29 May tarihinde ilk tünel savaşını biz başlatıyoruz. Bu tünel savaşında da patlacılar yerleştirmek amacıyla 30-40 km, 40 metre boyunca bir e, tünel kazıyoruz ve patlacılar yerleştiriyoruz. 400 kg kadar patlatıyoruz. Açılan çukurlara hücum ediyoruz. Sonra aynısını tersine ondan yapıyorlar. Burada 600 civarında tünel var toplamda. So according to the official records, uh, first tunneling was by the Turkish side on the 29th of May. And uh, the Turkish side started the, the tunnels nearly 440 meters and they settled they settled 400 kilograms of black gunpowder at the end of the tunnel uh, when they lit the fuse, a huge explosion and while the Turks were digging from right hand side to the left hand side Eli started it from the left hand side to the right hand side so 600 tunnels around here so there was a war on the ground but there was another war 600 tunnels, over 600 tunnels by the way, we, the tunnels and the trenches that we saw had names Piccadilly Turkish Trench, London Trench, Aussie Trench, the Turkish Trenches had codes E17, E15, E11, for example. So if you are looking for a trench, you can easily find uh, if you follow the trench maps. So this is going to take us to the most dangerous part of the battlefield, maybe, because the distance between the Turkish and the Allied trenches will be only, only uh, eight or ten meters. Oh. Only eight or ten meters. That's called Queen's Post. In Turkish, we say Bomba Sırtı. Atatürk'ün bomba sırta vakasını anlatmadan geçemeyeceğim dediği bir yer vardı burada. İşte biz diyor kişisel kahramanlıklarla ilgilenmiyoruz. Ancak bomba sırtı vakasını anlatmadan geçemeyeceğim. Süper vakitleri mesafe 8-10 metre. Şu sol tarafımızdaki çam ağaçları anzak mevzileri. Sağ tarafımızdaki çalılıklar bizim mevzilerimiz. Anlattığı yer şu ortasında yürüdüğümüz yol. İki mevzi birbirinden ayıran sınır. Ölü muhakkak. Ön süperdekiler kurtulamacasına düşüyorlar. Arka süperdekiler ise 3 dakika içerisinde ölecekleri bilerek öndekilerin yerlerini alıyorlar. Ne kadar büyük bir cesaretle, ne kadar büyük bir korksuzlukla okuma bilenler Kur'an okuyor. Abi buraya girelim abi. Bilmeyenler ise dua ederek cennete girmeye hazırlanıyor. İşte bize bu Çanakkale cephesinin savaşlarını kazandıran yüksek ruh budur dediği bu söylevine konu olan yerdir bu bomba sırtı. Yani Atatürk'ün söylevine konu olan yer şu iki mevzi, iki otopark arasında kalan asfalt olarak aklımıza kalsın. This is the most dangerous part as I told you because even Mr. Pakistan Atatürk uh, witnessed the things happening here. According to his diary, the Turkish soldiers in the first row of the trenches, they knew that they will be killed in a few seconds. And the Turkish soldiers in the second row of the trenches, they knew that they will be killed in a few minutes. Without any hesitation, they were replacing the first row. And same in the Allied trenches, because the road on your left hand side was the most dangerous part because that was the no man's land. And during the construction of the Turkish memorial in 1992, two skeletons were found side by side. One of them was a Turkish soldier and the other one was a British officer. And they were fighting on the second day of the landing operation. They were heavily wounded, but they didn't give up fighting. And their bodies were found in front of the triangular shaped memorial and reburied again in the same grave. We have 600 headstones there, but nobody buried there. Because uh, in our belief, we don't really like to walk on the actual burial site, so that's going to be a memorial only. But 1,115 Turkish soldiers were buried in the mass grave just behind our coach, so in the valley. So being used on the shield, it is a death in the shoulder. The gerçek şehitliğimiz hemen sol taraf, aracımızın arka tarafında kalan dere yatağının tamamı. Yani orada bir anıt, bir işaret kesinlikle beklemeyin tam anlamıyla doğal görüntüsüne bırakılmış durumda. Yani burası bizim aklımıza karşı şu asfalt yolu iki mevziyi birbirinden ayıran sınır. Atatürk'ün hatıralarına da anlatmış olduğu yerdir burası. Bomba sırtı vakası yarın öbür gün duyacak olursanız da...